eight. Eight fucking wins. Y'all know this was coming. So, anybody who doesn't expect this is an idiot. So, without further ado... <laughs> uh, where's the red? Oh, there's the red pin. All right. Considering this was one of the list of races for me to not watch since I was too busy apple picking with my friends Just chilling out their house for a little while as as well watching the Patriots game against the Dow ass Cowboys I don't really have much to say about that race because I am in no position to endure any absolute atrocities that is Texas Motor Speedway and how they fucked it up, so last year was my breaking point with it, so you're not really going to get m many reviews of the race on this uh, video because I'm not going to bother talking about the race other than the fact that Chris Busher's save was pretty cool, actually. Until it was rendered in vain because of the scuffle between he and Chase Briscoe, as well as uh, Tyler Reddick saving his car from spinning out. That was real damn cool to watch, as well as his uh, Intimidator scheme bumping and banging with that retro Axelta 90s looking scheme that Byron has been uh, operating all season long. So that kind of gave, gave me some nostalgic feels about Texas Motor Speedway in the 90s. And you're kind of feeling like, ah, nostalgia. Yeah, feels so damn sweet. But then it gets a kind of a little bit heavy handed when the first turn keeps fucking everybody up, especially when Kyle Busch uh, got into Chris Busher when the traffic of uh, that restart was getting all bunched up and sandwiched because of how much they just can't touch the black uh, asphalt from the higher lane. And in doing so, that uh, pretty much uh, obliterated Anthony Alfredo. Other than that, I really don't need to recap anything else that I saw. Other than the big one that I missed out on. And it triggered a bunch of angry boomers blaming it on Bubba Wallace. Because if it were anyone else, basically a no-name driver, unless that no-name driver happens to be a Require racing vehicle... You just hear cricket noises. So yeah, Kyle Larson's at eight wins now. Eight wins. You know, this is when I was asking my friends last night. When's the last time? Hold on, let me get into a later room. I think the last time that a Hendrick driver won that many times in a single season was Jimmy Johnson in 2007 and 2004. And the fact that Jimmy Johnson, I want, I'm going to go on a tangent a little bit. Jimmy Johnson didn't even win the championship in 2004, despite that many amounts of wins. All he had to win was, all he had to do was just either pass Greg Biffle, lead one lap at one of the few other chase races that he didn't lead a lap in, or just not crash a Kansas. That Kansas crash pretty much was the whole burden on Jimmy Johnson's shoulders that season. But this time, based on uh, how uh, overindulgent and overtly NFL appeasing this shitty NFL format is, there's no burden for uh, Kyle Larson to be any 
have any ounce of wariness on. Because based on this eighth victory of his at Tex Ass, this is enough of a Texas size victory for him to stay locked into the final four. So I, as a Kyle Larson fan, can breathe for the next two weeks. Now to complete that satisfaction, I need Chase Elliott to win either Kansas or Martinsville. Oh, and by the way, last decade, the record for Hendrick Motorsports for most amount of wins in a single season, it was 13. And now we're at 14. The more the merrier. All right, we can breathe for now, but don't count your chickens before they hatch. Still have a long way to go. Still got Kansas and Martinsville. Luckily, those are two tracks that Chase Elliott has won at before. So, we got to keep the optimism and hope that they come in clutch. Kyle Larson's good for now, but good until Phoenix, where he's in jeopardy of whether or not he'll win or lose the championship. But we need, all eyes need to be on Chase Elliott since he's the Hendrick driver that needs to lock himself safely into the Final Four by winning either Kansas or Martinsville. Both tracks he's won at before, so. He needs the best run he can ever possibly find. Kyle Larson has all the breathing room possible. Now it's Chase Elliott to make his move. Thank you guys for watching this brief little video. I know it's pretty short, and I know you guys are probably disappointed you didn't want me to go on talking about over and over how shit Texas is and how much I would rather have that absolute filth of a track to be chopped off the uh, NASCAR schedule in replacement to either Rockingham, Nashville Fairgrounds, or if you can't do either of those two tr dream tracks, just go to someplace like uh, Mid-Ohio or something. Or actually, I would consider uh, Mid-Ohio a good replacement for Circuit of the Americas if Circuit of the Americas is too technical for stock cars. So it's The Rock or Die or Nashville Fairgrounds. So yeah, apologies guys that uh, I probably may have disappointed you, but like I said, I made my word that I am not going to waste my breath on your shitty, fake, artificially manufactured races that are made for entertainment appeasement and artificial excitement based on only phenomenal restarts, so... You ain't getting those reviews because you're just going to get the same video over and over again. Over and over and over and over again. Just like before. Alright. Go Hendrick. Go Kyle Larson. Go Chase Elliott. Oh yeah, and go Red Sox and go Patriots. <laughs> just for a little side note of who I'll be rooting for when I have the motorsports stuff on mute. Thank you guys. Take care. Have a nice night. Have a nice October. Keep it real. Horns high. Keep it metal. Spacing out.